Hi, my name is John Maley. I'm currently a Major League hitting coach in professional baseball. What we found over the years is that everybody has their own style to hit, but there's certain swing similarities or absolutes that every great hitter has. Today I'm going to talk about how to master each one of these six absolutes, keeping the hitter's own style unless it directly affects one of the absolutes. Absolute number one, lower half low. This is a key in controlling your stride. It should be done slow, easy, and early with your weight going against your backside and not over. As the hitter gets in his stance and he has his rhythm in his setup, his first move is he wants to go back before he goes forward. As the pitcher separates his hands and starts to make his release and movement towards the hitter, the hitter should start to gather and get his weight to go against his backside. A lot of hitters will go back many different ways. That's the way their style of how they do it. Whether they toe tap or knee tuck or leg kick, they're open, they tap in here, they roll their front shoulder. Their first move you notice is they go back before they go forward. Okay? One of the key points to all of this is you want to get a little coil with your hips. You want to load your hips so that you can unload your hips. So it's almost like taking a medicine ball and throwing it. You wouldn't just take it forward and try to throw it. You would gather, coil, and then unload your hips. Also, the biggest issues we have are stride timing and getting too heavy to the front side and not being able to stay back on off-speed pitches. You stay back during your stride. So if you don't have any weight back, you don't have any weight to keep back. So if you were to get a little gather and a little coil, as you advance forward, you can hold and store your weight until you need to transfer it into the ball. Absolute number two, once you've completed your lower half load, you're going to have what we call a stride separation. As the hitter strides forward, his hands are going to move back in the opposite direction. This is called the strong athletic hitting position. This is the foundation of the hitter's swing. When the stride foot heel is planted, the front foot should be open at 30 to 45 degrees. The hitter should have pressure between his knees. The knob of the bat should be pointed at the catcher's feet. The tip of the bat should be somewhere over the top of his head. Hips, knees, and shoulders are square to home plate. This will allow the hitter to cover the entire plate and also to be in that strong athletic hitting position. And remember this, in order to have a good swing, you have to be in a good position to swing. Anything prior to your stride foot hitting the ground is called your pre-swing movements. Once your stride foot hits the ground, you need to be in this strong athletic hitting position. This is the foundation of your swing. So it's stride forward, hands back. No matter where you start your hands from, stride forward, hands back. The key to this is that you get in a position where you're going to throw the bat or you're going to load your scab. And all you have to remember at home is make sure when you stride forward, you hold pressure between your knees and you point the knob of the bat at the catcher's feet. Episode number three, you want to maintain your center axis. You want to keep your head directly between your feet. As a hitter, you always want to control your body's center of mass. Your head, your sternum, and your belly button. Wherever that goes is where your weight goes. So as a hitter, you always want to control that body center of mass in your negative modes, which is absolute number one in your gather, and during your stride separation. Once your swing starts, you want to maintain that body center of mass. We call that staying behind the ball. The straighter your line and your axis, the faster that your hips can rotate. Hitters that get too far forward, swings too steep. Hitters too far back, swings uphill. So we want to maintain our center of mass. So the axis is measured from the spine, down your head, out the other end into the ground, and you want to stay on that axis. From a front view, you don't want to land and be up in this position right here. You want to be in a strong athletic hitting position, so the posture is approximately 30 degrees. So when the hitter lands and gets in a strong hitting position, he wants to be in this 30 degree posture angle, and then he wants to maintain that throughout the course of his swing. At any point that you get off of that angle, here it's going to affect your back path and ultimately affect your swing and your ability to hit the ball hard. Episode number four. Your swing starts from the ground up. To create maximum back speed and force, your lower half or your big muscles have to lead your hands to the ball. The bigger the separation between your lower, and a half, lower half and your hands, the more back speed and better direction you'll have with your swing play. Once I gather and I strike separate and I get in that strong athletic hitting position, I've made, established my center, my axis, number three, as my front heel plants, my back heel is going to lift. And it's going to be the proper sequence of swinging the bat to create maximum force is foot, knee, hip, hands, last. So as my front heel plants, my back heel is going to lift, my back knee is going to work linear or forward, and I'm going to try to hold my hands back last. Now I feel the pre-stretching in here before the muscles are fired. The bigger the stretch that I get between my lower half and my hands, the more back speed and velocity I can create. Every hitter has the elastic regions of their body. It comes up through the body, around the shoulders, and comes back down. So it's like pulling a rubber band to here, or here, or here. Eventually it's going to snap. So hitters that land and don't start in sequence, they go in this position, there's no stretching. 
So if you want to create force, you have to stretch these bands. The initial part of your stretch happens in your separation, as you can see this band pull. And as the front heel goes down and the back heel gets up and his back knee works linear, which is forward, I've stretched. The farther I can stretch, when I let that go, the more force I can create. So we want to get into a strong athletic hitting position, and then we want to sequence the swing. Okay? Back, separate, heel up, release. Absolute number five, swing club. Once I've sequenced my swing and I've gathered, stride separated, maintained my center axis, and started my swing from the ground up to create this pre-stretching before the muscle is fired, now my hands take over. The key to hitting is to get on playing with the pitch as quick as you can and stay on playing with the pitch as long as you can. We call that short to long. We understand that the trajectory of the pitch coming in is approximately six degrees on a decline as the ball crosses the tip of home plate. So as a hitter, we want to take a direct line to that ball. We want to get on plane, and then we want to have a proper attack angle so that we stay on plane with that ball until our wrists roll. The quicker I can get here, and the longer I can have that proper attack angle matched up to the trajectory of the pitch, the better off I'm going to be as a hitter. So what we do is we use the term forward and down, hands inside the ball, but the key to this is to have good hand speed created from our lower half, hand speed's direction to the ball, trying to take the knob of the bat inside the ball, the bat's in the lag position. Once I make contact, I'm a palm up, palm down, the barrel's below my hands, and I matched up the trajectory of the pitch. As long as I get full rear arm extension, then my wrist roll around the corner. So three types of swing planes. There's a short to long, which is the ideal swing plane. My hands go forward and down inside the ball, the bat's lag, and I'm going to stay through the ball. There's a long to short, which I release the barrel too soon, and the bat head speed is faster than the initial knob speed to the ball, which gets me around the ball. And there's a short to short, where I'm inside the ball, and I'm out of the zone real quick. So the ideal swing plane is short to long. Back, stride separate, start from the ground up, maintain my center. Forward and down, bat in the leg position. Barrel below my hands just prior to contact. Tap angle through the ball as long as I can and to a good finish. Episode number six, dynamic balance. In order to be a good hitter, you have to have balance from the beginning of your swing to the end of your swing. The proper dynamic balance is to have your head over your sternum, over your belly button. That's called your body center of mass. If at any point you get out of your body center of mass, you're out of balance. So you want to make sure that our head stays over our, belly, our, our sternum and our sternum stays over our belly button and our negative move or our weight transfer back, which is absolute number one. We carry it into a strong athletic hitting position. Okay, that's our strike separation. And we're going to maintain it through a sequenced swing. Okay, so body, center of mass, gathered, held, carried into a strong athletic hitting position, maintained throughout a sequenced swing.